Now, with Gutenberg growing in popularity, it's only natural that we're going to see more and more tools to sit on top of it to complement it and expand what it can do. Today, we're going to have a first look at the beta version of MaxiBlocks. Now, MaxiBlocks is a Gutenberg plugin that kind of has more of a page builder-esque feel to it. They're kind of taking that tack. So a lot of things that we're used to, interactive sort of margins and padding and all those kinds of things, this includes it. This is still in beta. I've got access to it to test the beta out, so there may be quirks, bugs, and I can't cover everything because there's a huge amount. So if you are a user of something like GreenShift or you've looked into that before, this is probably quite akin to a tool like that. So we've got different theme styles. We've got pattern blocks. We've got all the normal kind of blocks that you expect. There's a ton of templates inside you in both dark and light variations. So you've got pretty much everything you need to start off with alongside some quite advanced features that make it pretty cool to work with. An integrated design library with thousands and thousands and thousands of icons that you can quickly and easily change the color of to get them exactly the way you want inside the theme, the color theme you're working with, with your site. So there's an abundance of things on you. I'll put a link in the description. Check it out for yourself to see everything that's going on. But I've already gone ahead and set up a test demo kind of site. This is what you get when you are a beta tester. What we can do now is we can go ahead and edit the page and that will then take us into the WordPress dashboard and open up the editor itself so we can see how everything works. So as I've said, this sits on top of Gutenberg. So you've got all the normal Gutenberg kind of layout. Plus we have the new option now, which is the maxi blocks option. If we go and click on the plus, you'll see there's our maxi blocks. Ignore everything else. That's all standard Gutenberg fare. So you've got all, all the sort of usual culprits inside you, including things like, you know, you've got your container so you can build things up from your container. So we click to add a container in, for example. You see, we get the normal choose what kind of layout you want. So if you want 50-50, for example, we can click on that, insert a 50-50 layout. If we now go ahead and take a look at our list view, you'll see there's our maxi rows, there's our two columns. So there's nothing you haven't already seen. And I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail with these. You can kind of see what they are and how they work. So let's go and select something. Let's say we'll grab this container. And now if we take a look on the right-hand side, you'll see all the options we have. And again, you can see this now has its own style kind of in keeping with the maxi block style. Now this is where the first thing that I'm not that uh, enamored with comes in. I think this could be made just a little bit more pro. It just looks a little bit, yeah, I'm just not that a big of a fan of it. I think it could just be a little bit of refinement in the UI. As you can see, things get very cluttered very quickly. Things are quite close together. So I think it would be nice to have a little bit of tweaking of the UI just to make it a bit more space, a bit more breathing space around it, just to make it a little bit nicer and easier to work with. However, that's more a form over function side of things. Everything you need is inside you, including these kind of starting points. You want to sort of set things up, so you want to use the kind of Flexbox grid, so you've got a standardized model of spacing and so on. Then you've got these options inside you. You can see if we change things, you can see it updates in real time on the screen and everything then updates in size and scale. So we put that back to what it was, which is large. You can set things like your background color. You've got your hover states inside you. So all the things you would expect to see are inside you. And this is obviously just specifically to do with the container. Select something else, like for example, the rows, you'll get different options on the right hand side. Jump over into the advanced section and inside there you can see we can apply classes. So we've got the option to work with CSS classes. Custom CSS is directly inside you. You can see we can choose how we want to target it. We we'll apply scroll effects there inside you. Transformation, hover, transition. There's an abundance of things inside you, including coming down to the Flexbox option. So you've got a full complement of Flexbox controls to give you all the control you should need for most use cases. And you've got Flex Parent and Flex Child. So all those options are in there. And again, now if we come into, let's say we'll open this up and we'll choose an actual widget, for example, like this icon. You can see now if we go to the settings, we've got a different set of options. So we can do the alt text, the icon colors. And again, you can see we can change the color on an individual icon by icon basis, or we can globally change those. I'll come on to that a little later. So all the things you expect are inside you. You know, you've got easy control. If we come over to any of these, you can see we've got interactive options for padding and margin. So we can just click and drag to increase or decrease these. You can see it's all just visually interactive. So this is one of those things that nice to kind of visually tweak. And then if you want to refine it, you can use the options on the right hand side. You'll also notice that when we select anything, we get this little sort of pop up menu that gives us additional controls. Things like the mover, we can move things up and down. So 
typical kind of way you'd have this when it's working with Gutenberg. You've got options then for your icon fill color. If you've got an icon selected, icon line color, you know, depending upon what block you select, you'll have different options. So if we select the text, for example, you see here we can change the type of text, whether it's a H1 to H6, paragraphs, and so on. You can apply links to this. Again, you've got all the options then for what types you want to open a new tab, whether it's sponsored, you know, all those things you'd expect. Click on the three dots, there's even more options depending upon what you choose. So you could kind of liken this very much to working with Gutenberg or working with a tool like Divi, but they've kind of overridden those default settings and use their own maxi block settings. So you've got everything you should need to be able to quickly and easily work inside the editor itself, which is good to see. Now that's kind of interacting with the design aspect itself. Let's come up to this button at the top, which is the maxi blocks button. If we click on there, let's close this list down. You can see we've got, again, all these options now for, we can see what this looks like on the different device sizes. We can adjust those values on there so we can see exactly what's gonna look like. So we've got multiple breakpoints on there, which is always good to see. You've got the template library and you've got style cards. Now let's take a look at the style cards first. This is where you can choose the different global styling colors. At the moment, we've kind of got this template maxi default, but there's a bunch of different options inside you. Like for example, this ballerina, we'll select it. Typography changes, color of all the icons change. You can see how quick and easy this is. You want a dark version of this, you can choose dark versions. Now some of these are locked away at the moment. So I'm assuming either I don't have access to them in this beta, or you need to do something to get access to them. This is the first look, I haven't deep dived into this at all. So it's pretty cool. You can see you can adjust those very quick and easy. And if we come to the template library, this is where you can see all the different templates. Now, you've got all, you've got free, and you've got pro. Now, obviously, there's going to be free versions, there's going to be a pro version. They're going to want to make money. But you can see if we come into all, and uh, we go into header, for example, we can see hero sections. And then you've got all the options inside here for the different heroes. We can switch between the dark and the light, so we get a different iterations. So you can see we've got swap stock images for placeholders to save disk space if you want to. You can select that, and that will avoid downloading those sort of preview images just for placeholders in there so you don't download a ton of junk that you then need to delete when you want to replace them with your live images which i think is a pretty neat little feature let's leave that disabled for now though let's go ahead and insert let's go for a header let's go for a hero and let's go for the dark tones so let's say i like the look of this one i can preview it i can preview it then on the different kind of devices so i'll say if i'm happy with that or if i want to switch it over to a different kind of design i can switch switch tones to the light tone, switch tone to the dark tone, and you can see this is a pro one. Let's go ahead and insert this. And once that's completed, now that's inserted, let's go ahead and reposition that so it's at the top. And you see now there's our design. And the thing you'll also notice is this also picks up those global colors when we use the options for the style card. So if we change this to something else again, let's go to that, this daemon. You can see this changes, the icons change, you've got the colors inside here. So all this is kind of linked up to those global colors and styles and you can create your own as well. You're not limited to just the selection that you've got inside here. And again, you'll see you've got different options at the top for the various different parts of this particular design. And again, if we come over to the options on the list view or the layout view, you can see everything is broken down and we can access every single aspect of this overall design, make changes to it, whatever we want. And this is kind of just the beginning of what you can do with maxi blocks. There's a couple of things that I really like about it. Like I say, I like the fact that you've got lots of style cards. You can work with global style. There's full flex box controls. Everything you'd like to see inside a fully featured editor. Now, obviously, I haven't spent a huge amount of time with this. So there's probably things that I think I would like to see or update it and change. However, for a beta that's not finally released yet, I think this is a really solid starting point. It's something you may want to check out. Maybe even try and get on the beta program yourself. It took a few weeks for me to get on there, but I'm assuming this is probably getting closer to release, so maybe you'll get on a little quicker. I'll put a link in the description so you can do that anyway. Things I'm not so fussed on. It can get a little bit slow. Now, whether this is the editor itself is a little bit slow and a little bit kind of laggy, or because this is actually running on InstaWP and there may be lots and lots of installs, and I don't know what kind of resources are being allocated to this particular site. So it may be one or the other. So I'm not going to mark it down for that, just to be aware that they may experience kind of a little bit of slowdown or lagginess in the editor. Just be with it. 
Next thing, like I said at the top of this video, I think there could be some refinement to the overall interface. I think everything just looks just a little bit too cluttered, but I think it would be nice to see these streamlined and just refined a little bit. So overall, I think Maxi Blocks has a lot of good things going for it if you want to stick with the Gutenberg side of things. Now, because it's a beta and it's also installed on an instability site, I'm not going to go ahead and do speed tests on it because I don't think it would be very fair at this point in time. However, when the final is released, I'll take it for a spin and see how that stacks up on a dedicated server setup so I can kind of get a better indication of what it's going to be like. But check it out. Links in the description if you want to join the beta and try it out for yourself. I think it's interesting. I think it's something that's bringing some new things to the table over a lot of the other Gutenberg plugins out there that open up and make it far more powerful. But let me know your thoughts on it. Have you tested it? Have you joined the beta? What do you think? Let me know in the comment section down below. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. And until next time, take care. Thank you.